Okay, this has been a very long video, and I don't think I want to cut out any of it. So I'm just going to post this maybe as an introduction to my 30-day minimalist challenge, and then make a separate video on the actual items I've decluttered. That would be fair to the viewers, I think. Hello, very beautiful people of YouTube. Hello to the YouTube world out there. My name is Nandini 3D, and this is Figuring It Out Alive, a platform where I share tips and tricks on how to be alive, stay alive, and kind of not want to die or not die. Um, I am out of depression, which is awesome. Uh, brilliant. I thought it would happen, and it did happen. And this is the only part of my room that I can show you that does not have mess right now. So I've clearly fallen off the, you know, keeping a tidy space wagon, if there is such a wagon, 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 um, and uh, at the beginning of this month, like many other months prior to this particular one, I attempted to do a minimalist challenge, and I failed. Then what is this video about, Nandini? Well, I'm going to do it anyway, and okay, first I should give you some context. This video actually turned out to be a spillage of the reasons behind my hoarding habits and my prior hoarding lifestyle. The actual video of the items I got rid of in this month's minimalist challenge are in a separate video which shall be released right after this one, so it'll be the next video. And I shall also offer my apologies for all the background noise and for my sweaty face. I'm switching for my art, which is this. Um, what is the minimalist challenge? You might be wondering in case you don't know what that is, let me tell you. So the minimalist challenge is, I think, a game that was invented by the minimalists and minimalists. You can check them out on YouTube. They have, I think they have a book. They have a documentary for sure. Anyway, I think Joshua something and there's two white guys somewhere in America who kind of gave up their possessions and started promoting the idea of minimalism quite heavy-handedly and they do lots of talks and some of their substance is really great so I'm not sure if they're the ones who came up with this challenge or somebody else um, anyway it's a fun thing to do <laughs> if cleaning is the idea of if, if fun what if cleaning is an idea of fun to you is if, if fun is clean my brain is not working why why okay so here's how it goes. Um, usually you would start at the beginning of a month and corresponding to the day, to the date, you get rid of that many items from your home. So on the first day you get rid of one item, second day two items, third day three items, and so on and so forth. Up to 30 or 31 um, items on the 30 or 31st day, depending on which month you chose. Now, I chose April, uh, got rid of one item on April 1st, and then didn't do much until April 15th when I got rid of 15 items, and then April 16th when I got rid of 16 items, maybe? Um, so uh, right now it's like at the end of April, and I'm still determined to get rid of things from my house. So I'm going to just like pretend it's day two and just get rid of two things all the way up to 15, and then edit this video and see how long it's going to be. Now, um, I think I'm going to make two versions of this video. One will just be like showing the items like item one, day one, boom, gone. Two, day two, boom, gone, all the way up to 30. And then um, some, I might make another video which has me giving reasons for me throwing away items because some of these are very usable, which is why they have been occupying a lot of space in my house as well as my mind um, but it really is time to let them go and I have so many things I have such an excessive amount of things I am a true hoarder or I was anyway that and even actually even these days I've been you know getting back to my old hoarding tendencies if I'm being honest oh I think you saw a bit of mess in the background a rolled up carpet um, yes so The reason why this is hard for me is because 
I don't have a lot of memories of myself, my life, or anything I've done, even of friends I've had in the past and our interactions and stuff, you know? Um, and you might be wondering, yo, what the hell? How do you not have any memories? And thanks to YouTube, um, I found out that several, like, you know, a, a large, no, a percentage of people, that's a nice way to put it, because I don't know whether it's a large percent or a small percentage, but um, people, some people who have suffered from depression tend not to have a lot of memories or store a lot of memories during their time of depression. And for me, that was most of them, all of my teen years. And so I've always like retained every document and every, everything, everything, just so that I can look back at it and remember. And as I've been going through this process of trying to get rid of my possessions, actually, I've been seeing things that I completely forgot, you know, holidays I took that I don't even think about or remember. But um, another thing I've been accepting or trying to transition into, I should say, is um, completely letting go of my past and trying to create a future for myself. This is quite difficult because I'm these days I'm okay with my present. These days I am. But a month ago I wasn't. And who knows what the future is going to be like, right? So um, quite often I like to think back to my younger days and I feel really proud of my old accomplishments and I think certain facts that just happened to happen when I was younger were cool even though I didn't actively make them happen, you know, or like um, I can't really credit myself or my abilities. For example, like some sort of school trip to some place. I thought that was super cool and it's one of my cooler experiences in life. But without the, you know, evidence on paper, I don't even have a memory of it really. I And, and like when I hold the things in my hands, that's when I'm like, oh yeah, I remember when I collected the shell or, you know, when, when, when I went to this place and I shared a hotel room with this other person and we became friends and stuff, you know, like that's when I remember. And um, for about a year, less than a year maybe, maybe more than a year, I have been trying to um, come to terms with letting go of all of that and instead focusing on how can I be proud of myself now, how um, things I can do, but I'm such a coward and I don't take many risks, any risks actually sometimes. So, you know, you might think, ah, oh, this is easy, just take some stuff and check it in the bin, but there's a reason why people hoard, you know, um, and I think those reasons are pretty valid too. So I am going to do it. I'm going to get rid of around 500 items, if not more. Um, and these will be the easy items because I have so many that I can afford to get rid of quite a few. And a lot of these items aren't mine either. So it's easy. It's so easy to get rid of things that aren't yours. Sometimes I that this it's going to sound quite mean actually but it's a fact and i'm going to say it um when i watch minimalists share what they have preserved in their like memory boxes which are you know like small containers or containers that could that keep their keepsake possessions sometimes i look at them and i'm like i wouldn't keep that but the thing is, those things are precious to them and to their life and their memories. So it's valuable to them. Whereas from an outsider perspective, it's worthless. And I say, and, and it's it's amazing because that's how I feel about things. Like when I see things in my house that don't belong to me, that belong to maybe family, or sometimes I don't even know who they belong to. I'm like, I'd be happy to get rid of that, but I'm not allowed to because that's not my possession. Whereas even like a document, like I... I recently saw um, a printed out um, tribal, travel or hostel booking itinerary um, of when me and one of my former best friends, we planned a trip. Um, and it was the very first time I traveled alone. And I was like thinking back, I'm shocked that that happened actually, because I didn't even know that at that time in my life I could have traveled alone because I was still living with my parents 
and they were never open to such a thing before but it happened and it's a fact that while i was living with my parents i did travel and um i even invited a friend to stay over at, at my house for a few days from overseas you know and that's something that i would normally never associate with my my upbringing my childhood teen life but it happened and that document is worthless it's just like really really many year old you know just like booking confirmations printed out i'm sure i have a digital copy in my emails somewhere but it was so interesting to like hold that and remember that experience but i should like go you know but it's 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 really um I have such a like an a skewed idea of what my past was like because I don't remember most of it. So I just like base it off of feelings and like almost like stereotypes that I've developed about my own past. And quite often I come across things that really um shatter that reality that show me that reality was quite different. So it's one of these things that you know I will let go of them of these things but if anyone was to ever ask me yo what was your life like they ought to be satisfied with my response which will very clearly say that I don't remember man I don't remember my childhood or teen years hopefully I'll remember my 20s hopefully so coming back to the reason why I even mentioned that document itinerary in the first place that is actually such a worthless item but i you know hesitate to part with it because i feel like in a couple of years if i don't have it with me i will completely forget about the whole thing and that's when i think yo like materials are so subjective you know and there's this one quote that jay shetty said that he got from bhagavad gita Ugh, i don't know I, I hate misquoting him because it was such a powerful quote you know what i'm gonna put the actual quote up here detachment is not that you own nothing detachment is that nothing owns you that's from the bhagavad gita so that's an extremely powerful quote and every time i hear it or I see it or read it i only hear it um i i just immediately get up and get rid of things from my room and throw things away because that's what life is like. Life is not just like an accumulation of things. And I need to tell myself life is not an accumulation of your memories or your past either. In a way it is because every single action that we do affects not just us, but the whole world. But instead of like clinging to the past, which is so elusive to me and it's baffling, honestly, because I don't have any memories. Um, I should just like get rid of everything so that I have a clear space up here to do things with intention and um, I, I, I think I'll just feel really liberated because right now when I look around I get really um, suffocated uh, emotional about nothing you know like I'm just like why do I have so many things I just want to get rid of everything even though a lot of it's worth a lot of money but right now it's not worth any money sitting around so i had started off um selling some stuff but now i'm just wondering whether i should just like put everything in some black bags trash bags and just like throw it all out because i'm tired of looking around i'm tired of maintaining such an unruly mess of things you know and Sometimes I feel like I have things in order, everything's in its place, and I'm happy and I'm satisfied. But very quickly, within like a week or two weeks, it gets to a point where I don't want to deal with it anymore. Um, so you know what? Like right now, I'm feeling really fired up and committed. So I'm just going to grab everything, put it in a, into a box, into a bin, and throw it out. Uh, that I'm almost willing to commit to doing a 30-day minimalist challenge for the rest of the year. So in, a, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to start um, editing these videos and putting them up. That will be April's stash of things I'm getting rid of. Um, and then I'll do another one for May. And then I'll do another one for June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And 
it'll be interesting to track the progress and see like right now I'm I don't even know how to talk about this you know I've just been rambling on and on about nothing um seemingly nothing with lots of white hairs showing and sweaty faces and pimples that have reappeared so I need to do another water fast oh this is a mess my life is a mess and um normally like I just watched the video back the one that I recorded previously and I was like wow what a mess I have to like put something else on it, which is why I'm recording this clip right here. Um, but I'm going to just put this out there. I'm just going to put it out there and hopefully as I declutter my life and my mind and my space, um, I will have more clarity when I speak in front of you as well. That's, that's my hope. I think it's going to happen. It's just going to take a lot of work and consistent work as well. This, this month I'm fluking it, man. I'm getting rid of things, but it's just like, it's not a true minimalist challenge because that develops a discipline to like every day wake you know like spend some time every single day assessing your surroundings and being conscious of you know what you choose to keep and what you get rid of i'm sure that that process looks like you know picking an object up and maybe putting it back and thinking to yourself you know what in a week from now if i haven't used it if i still feel unsure about it then i'll get rid of it I want to develop that discipline, so maybe I'll do that next month, maybe, I'll try, I will, I will, because I'm, I'm sick and tired of it, man, I want to live with nothing, I want to have just a small number of items that I do use, and the fact is, I don't actually use a small number of items, there are quite a few items that I use, but even if I was to just keep those and get rid of everything else, life would be so much more freeing, I've talked on for hours, okay, I'm going to shut up now and put this mess of a video up. The concluding point is that when I watch videos of other people sharing their most um, valuable items in terms of like emotional attachment, they have one box per person in their family or something. And they never allow that box to overflow. Now, I need to become very picky and choosy with the items that I want to keep and that I want to remember, which to me does not mean keeping items and remembering them. It means to me what in my past is valuable enough to not forget because I've forgotten all of it or to not remember again or, or to remember again, you know, like I, because everything else I will never remember. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Um, so what's valuable enough to remember from my past? and to kind of keep, you know, um, maybe it might even be something that's a very negative memory that I think I ought to hold on to. Because I, I don't, I don't think life is all just rainbows and happiness, you know, like life is tough, life is hard um, as well. And I don't want to color my past in a weird way. I've, I've always wanted a sense of reality, but without a memory, there is no sense of reality. And this is not even something that I plan to say, actually. This has just been like a flow of words and thoughts. And But but it's important to share, you know. I, I want people to understand why people hold on to things. Something as worthless as a five-year-old, uh, five-plus-year-old um, printout of some train bookings and hostel <laughs> booking confirmations, you know, like... Yeah. Anyway, I hope you have an excellent day. I'm going to turn on the fan, hopefully reduce my sweating, and re-begin decluttering, i.e. getting rid of things, not decluttering. I'm not like, let's be very precise with language. I'm going to get rid of things, starting with day two all the way up to day 14, and then check my footage to see how much footage I have of day 15, 16, 17, and then continue on because it must happen. 500 plus items must leave my house by the end of this weekend. I am determined. Okay, thank you for watching. I'm sorry if this has been a waste of your time, but I'm sure you would have clicked away already. Okay, bye. Please subscribe. Maybe, I don't know what. Bye.